Hey everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to draw your dog or maybe someone else's dog that you really love. In my last video about drawing pets, I drew my dog Jazzy here, which is my co-host today. But with this video, I wanted to draw one of the dogs that I follow on social media, which is Maxine. Don't tell Jazzy this isn't about her though. Anyways, let's start! So I'm just sketching here. I'm just making sure it looks like Maxine and not just some random corgi. If you draw a specific animal for a client, then it is important that you make sure that the picture that you're drawing is identical to the picture that they sent you. So that is why I am tracing right now, which also saves you a lot of time, which is important in the art industry. I have gathered pictures of Maxine on the canvas and I have also inspiration pictures on there of art that I really like. I wanted to draw Maxine differently than how I normally draw pets. The way I'm drawing her right now is actually more the way that I intended to be drawing pets, if that makes sense. But I kind of got lost in drawing the hairs. Yeah, this is a nice reset for me. Then I start laying down my base colors with a soft round opacity brush. The brush that you choose has impact on the final product of your drawing. I wanted something more soft with this painting, so that's why I chose for that brush. When I'm drawing humans though, I like to have a bit more roughness in the brush. I don't like the soft look on humans at all, but that's just my preference. Also, I really like the blue background in the original picture, so I decided I'm going to keep that in my drawing. I also add in a bit more of the obvious shading, like under her chin for example, and I I also do this at this point with like a big round soft brush, like the same brush as before, but this time just very big. I don't go into much detail at this point with the fur yet. I start off with the nose and stuff. So yeah, let's go to the nose. As you can see, I'm color picking from her picture, from her real nose, and I'm placing those colors at the exact same spots as the picture. I also often change the size of my brush when I'm doing this, because the size of the brush gives a different outcome. If I make the brush smaller, then I will have a rougher edge, so it will be sharper. And if I make the brush bigger, then I can make it blend a bit more without actually blending. So it kind of like saves you a bit of time. If you want something blended, you just take a bigger brush. It also kind of depends on the situation because sometimes it just doesn't fit. So I don't do it. Make sure you're not zooming in too much on your drawing and not for too long because it might give you a disoriented look on your piece and you might draw details that you won't even see later on. So it's just a waste of time. This is something you need to keep in mind like throughout the whole drawing, but especially when you're like doing stuff like the nose, the eyes and stuff, because you just tend to zoom in more, which is fine, but just don't do it too much and for too long. And don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like the picture. For example, the tongue that I drew, it looks good, but if you put it next to the picture, it doesn't look the exact same. It doesn't always have to be exactly the same, unless you're doing like things that are specific to that dog or pet, you know, then you want it to be the same, but something like the tongue is very, you know, all the tongues kind of look the same. So I just do what I know that looks good. Like I add more lighting, like where it's kind of wet and stuff. I add that even though you don't see that in the picture, but I just know that it looks good when you're drawing. Don't make me wet though. No licking allowed. If you are struggling right now, like you cannot get the nose or the eyes to look right, just take a closer look at your reference drawings of other people. Look at the shapes, how they did stuff. It's easier to identify what they were doing and then copy that instead of looking at a picture that doesn't have brush strokes at all. It's just way easier to identify something and to understand it and to copy it. When I worked on the eyes, I finished one side before I went to the other one, which I don't really recommend because I had a rough time like matching the eyes. <laughs> so it's better to just uh, do the same thing on both the eyes so you have the exact same colors and you at that moment know what you're doing because I already forgot what I did before and because I have like the brain of a goldfish. So I had a hard time matching those. The first eye went like way quicker than the other one. So that's just a little tip. Don't do it the same way I did. I also find it kind of hard to give like proper advice on how to draw the eyes because I just do it and I don't think. It's not like the eyes that I draw are like extremely special or something. 
I just know when to change my brush size and when to change the colors and stuff like that. And you know, since I've drawn quite a few eyes now, I know where to put highlights to make it pretty. So my advice kind of is to just look at other people's drawings, kind of look where they put highlights that just makes the eyes, you know, better. It makes them pop more, you know? So just look at other people's art and try to remember it, copy it. Maybe when you're working on a piece, just copy it immediately because that makes you remember it more. Like I don't necessarily look at the original picture for this because if I exactly copied that, I don't think it would have looked as good. So now it's time to do the rest, which is the fur. It kind of really depends on what you like visually. But yeah, since you're watching my video, I'm assuming you want this kind of vibe as your end result. So I'm gonna try and explain how I got to this, even though my English is like a four out of 10, but I'm gonna do my best for you. So I had some examples on my canvas and that was how I wanted my art to look. But if you look closely, you see they don't have like a lot of hairs. It's more like an idea of fur, like clumps of fur. The one at the bottom right corner even looks like it's kind of made of clay. It doesn't have any like smaller brush strokes at all. So I'm not going to make my brush really small small and draw in all the lines. That's personally not something that I like enjoy doing or that I like the look of, but you know, if, if you do like that, then you do you, you know? In my last pet drawing video, I did draw more hairs than I did right now, but I used a whole different technique. So if you want like a little bit more hair, then you can watch that video too. I'll explain how you get a little bit more hair in there. For this piece right now, I just used still the same brush as I was using at the beginning the big round soft opacity brush and I just use it to draw like shapes, lines, clumps of hair and sometimes I do switch to like a smaller brush and I make a little bit more smaller strokes to give like an assumption of hair but it's not like I'm doing a lot and like a lot of small hairs and I also sometimes go in with like a textured brush but like little pickles and stuff. I just go over it too to give it a little bit more texture and I also use a grain filter at the end to give it a bit more texture and not get like that clay look because that's not something that I want. It also depends on where on the drawing like at the top you would have a bit more smaller hairs and here you would have a lot longer hairs so it depends on the fur coat too. And then all the way on the bottom, I am doing less detail and I just make it flow out in the background color. And it's done! Woohoo! I printed it on glossy stuff. It wiggles. I wanted to show it because I'm happy with it. It looks cool. And I hope Maxine, well, the owners of Maxine, see it too. I hope they like it. I like it. I'm gonna enjoy this. And I'll probably draw way more dogs because I follow so many dogs on social media and I wanna draw them all. I already know who I wanna draw next. Bye! If you like this video, then please consider subscribing, liking the video, leaving a comment. You can also check me out on other social media. It's linked down below. If you perhaps like gaming, then I also have a gaming channel and I also stream games. So it would be fun if you came and hang out and chat with us and maybe we can also play a game together sometimes. Probably we shouldn't hug him. Probably. Probably. But it's really tempting to hug him. I'm already getting hot and sweaty in here because it's Kylo Ren. Hello. Hello. <gasps> Playing with the tail? Oh my god, are we a kitten? How adorable. If you have suggestions about what I should draw next, then please leave a comment or message me on Discord, linked down below. And yeah, have a lot of fun drawing, guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!